How can I tell if two Java instances represent the same instance? And what does class equality mean in Java? That's next. Growing up in the USA, I was fed a huge dose of Sesame Street on television. Sesame Street was a program that taught preschool kids simple lessons like shapes, letters, and numbers. I think my parents saw it as an hour of their day they could safely ignore me. In the show, there is a segment where three kids were shown and one was different in some way. They sang a song, one of these kids is not like the others, and you'd have to figure out which one before the song ended. The question here is, what does it mean to be the same or different in Java? If you modeled me, maybe two of me had blue shirts and the third had a red shirt. So their shirt color attribute would be blue for two DJ instances and red for a third DJ instance. Are they equal because they have the same color shirt or are they the same me? We're going to clear that up in this lesson as soon as we learn about what it means in Java for two instances to be equal. Just with the DJ example, we can see that what equal means is a bit fuzzy. Let's start with what we know. If we have an instance, any class, it's equal to itself. That's pretty obvious. A equals A. Now, if we create a second instance, call it B, and assign it the reference A, well, in this case, we have two references pointing to the same instance. We saw this in the copy constructor tutorial. So in this case, A equals B. Here's where things get a little fuzzy. Let's create two DJ classes. They both have a shirt color, which is blue. If we compare the two in Java, they're not equal. DJ A is not DJ B. They have the same values, but the reason is the equals operator tests for identity. Identity is not equality. The string class is a bit trickier. If we create two strings, both with the same values, and then compare them, what happens? Well, Java says they're equal. Since I know that some of you out there are screaming, not true, let's run the code. Two strings. We'll set each to the same value, then compare them using the equality operator. And it prints, very cool. This pretty much breaks everything we're learning here. Basically, Java gets smart about things and does something called interning. We saw something similar to this when we were comparing small integer classes. We'll cover strings in depth very soon. So why did we do that? I wanted to show you that we really need to understand what we're doing when we compare instances. If we do the same test with two instances, each having a single attribute with the same value, the instances will fail the equality test. The equality operator isn't the best choice for testing equality because it has different results. So how do we test for equality? Every Java class has a method called equals. It's defined in the class object. We'll call it on one instance and pass it the second instance we want to test. Here's the way that we really want to test strings. There's a catch, however. In the object class, the equals method just calls the equals operator. This means we need to override the equals method to define what equals means for our classes. If we override equals, here's what we need to keep in mind. First, an instance must be equal to itself. Any test we write must first check to see if the two instances are really the same instance. Next, we check to see if the parameter instance is null. If it's null, we got to return false. This makes sense because equals instance exists. The null doesn't, so they can't be equal. Third, we make sure we have two instances from the same class. We're getting an object instance as the parameter when we call equals, so we don't know until we check or cast it, which is what we do next. We'll cast the instance to the class we're testing. Finally, we check every attribute. If the attribute is another class, you have to make the decision again if equals needs to be overridden. If everything passes, we have two equal instances. Otherwise, we return false. And just when we thought we were done, we have another method to override, hash code. This method is used in hash maps. We haven't covered hash maps yet, but here's a cliff note version of what's happening. Hash maps have several buckets where we can store instances. Hash code produces an integer, which is the bucket number we store our class. This makes it much easier to find them later when you have millions of instances. If we don't override hash code, two instances that evaluate to equal would have different hash codes. When we use our instance as a key for a hash map, we'll run into a problem where two instances which evaluate to equal will be stored with different values. Now that's bad. Let's implement the hash code. The two rules are, first, two equal instances always result in the same hash code. Second, if two instances have the same hash code, that says nothing about if the two are equal. 
It could be some weird quirk that the two unequal instances return the same bucket number. The idea isn't to give unique buckets for each class. We want to make sure each bucket has roughly the equal number of items in it. When we calculate a hash code, we want to first start with a prime non-zero number. That's our initial hash. Then for every attribute in our class that contributes to equality, we need to combine them with our initial hash. So using this chart, calculate the value. Once we have a number, we'll take our initial hash multiplied with another non-zero prime number and add the calculated value. After we've done this for every attribute in our class, we return the result. Now that's a lot of work. A better way is to rely on our IDE to generate this. For example, we can go into our class in NetBeans, right click and select insert code. From there, select equals and hash code. That will do this for you. It's still important to know what the IDE is doing for us because you'll always want to make sure that the IDE didn't do anything stupid. Wow, that was a long tutorial. Thank you for making it to the end. Equality is something that should be easy, but has many nuances. So if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss a video. Liking helps me understand what I'm doing right. So if you like the video, you know what to do. And with that, I'll see you in the next tutorial.